Hello and welcome to another edition of the Nde Oli Tal Show. Today, I have a person that is involved in all of our lives. I think almost every day, one way or another. And this is a homage to all people in the media um, field, be it bloggers, vloggers, reporters, journalists, everybody that sends information in value time. This is an homage to you because the person I have here today is one of you. He's an excellent young man. He's a gentleman and he's doing so good. That's why he's here to chat with us on the show. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to meet this amazing Gambian personality. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. And with me today in the studio, I have no other than Mr. Ali Sise. Ali, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Le Oli. It's a pleasure to be on the program today. It's amazing to have you here. First of all, I'm going to tell you, you're one of the people that I really follow. I pay very close attention to your work because you're a very um, passionate young man. I think you know what you're doing. You have passion for what you're doing. And hats off to you for all the accomplishments you've made so far. But before we get into you and um, how far you've come and all that, I want you to give a, a brief background of who this amazing Ali Sise is. Thank you very much. Uh, Ali Sise is a, is, a, is a Gambian, actually, in his early 30s, actually uh, born in rural Gambia in a village called Dongoroba in Jara. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born and then attended my primary school there. Mm -hmm. From there, I moved to Burang Upper Basic School, still within Jara. That's where I did my junior school. And then to Tahir Ahmadiyya Senior Secondary School in Soma. Actually, I would say I did my basic school, everything within the Lower River region. Mm -hmm. And then from there, moved down to the coast where actually I did my you know journalism you know, mm -hmm. courses and then you know mm -hmm. started profession, actual, actual journalism in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, it continues the way I am today. How was it like growing up as a young, a young boy? How was it like growing up in that um, kind of world, that kind of life? You know, that was, I don't know, you said early 30s. But then how was it like back then compared to now? It, it wasn't easy knowing the fact that uh, it is never easy, you know, back in, in rural Gambia, you know, born in a family where you know all was in rusty for you i mean it was quite challenging uh, for the fact that um, I, my parents have to go through a lot to ensure that you know i was able to go to school get educated and to be where i am okay. it was never easy to be honest with you i mean we have to go to the farm to make sure that you know we till the land to to be able to make ends meet and then we're grateful that at least you know all our aspirations, dreams back then are now becoming uh, becoming becoming true and then uh, we are very grateful. But to be honest with you, it was it was never easy. It wasn't easy at the time. It wasn't. But that sounds like a beautiful story. It's almost as if I can say it. So do you have siblings, brothers, sisters? Yes, I, I do. I, I come from a family of five, actually. Oh. My, my parents uh, have five of us. I have two elder brothers, Modu and Omar, and then I have one younger brother by the name Al Kali, and then our last born is the chat. Mm -hmm. She's the only female in the, oh, in the wow. family, Maria too. So I, I bet yeah. you guys spoil her. <laughs> oh yes, the we, only we girl. do. I mean, yeah, actually, she's wow. the last born of the family. Being raised in an environment that is so pure, like she said, did you have the access to seeing, like, um, the media, like journalism, people reporting? Because it's very. The way you take your job with so much passion, it's like somebody who was hungry for it, who was born to do this. Take me back to those years of you being so young and going to school, being a young boy in rural Gambia. And what was your first experience with the media? Yes, I, I think the, the, the person started way back when I was going to primary school, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work in GRTS, you know, mm -hmm. when you had the like of Bora and Butch yes. and, and others on GRTS. So, I mean, they were among the people who actually inspired me. Mm -hmm. And anytime when I watch GRTS at the time and I see them, what they are doing, trying to bring out stories you know, across the country, it inspires me. And I could remember there was this particular year in our village, there was this uh, 
armed robbery. Oh. And then uh, actually, you know, they, they came and then, you know, there was this attack in the village and a lot was taken. Oh, no. But then this thing was not reported as we wanted in the media. And from that incident, I, I started to develop uh, passion for, for journalism and it, it, it guided me through even from, from primary school to junior school to high school. You know, whoever knows me knows that yes, I, I, I have always had this passion that one day I'll be a journalist. And then I, I remember when I completed my, 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 senior, my senior school and then I moved to the coast, uh, I was staying with a, with a, with a cousin sister, mm -hmm. uh, Amika, she is now in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I came, I did uh, IT classes because I was, I, 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 I knew that at some point, I need to have a background information IT, about yeah. you know how to operate IT and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2008, around September, I mean, uh, I decided to join the Daily Observer. Okay. At the time, uh, we had the likes of uh, Ibrahim Jaumani, mm -hmm. you know, the likes of Kemo Cham, mm -hmm. uh, Nana Maketa, Lamin Diba, mm -hmm. you know, Abdullah John, Asan Sala, wow. and, and many others. At the time, Mene Magdal was the managing director. Okay. And that was the time I, I joined the, the Daily Observer, and that's where it all started, actually. Mm -hmm. I joined as a freelance reporter. But uh, because of the commitment that uh, the editors at the time saw in me, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was able to develop quickly. Mm -hmm. I could remember when I joined the Observer, I was there with others on, on probation. I remember at the end of the six months, some of some of them left oh. because, I mean, perhaps, you know, they, they didn't satisfy mm -hmm. the editors at the time, but I, I was maintained. And then I think oh. for me, that was that was a moral booster for me mm -hmm. that, yes, definitely I will do it, knowing the, knowing the fact that uh, the team at, at the Observer then mm -hmm were people who were very serious about, about what they do, mm -hmm. the likes of Ibrahim Jaumani, of mm -hmm. course, Kemo Cham, Nana Maketa, and others. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they were very helpful at the start of this journey. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that they saw that, because I think um, in everything that one's doing, passion, I think, is number one. If you're not passionate about it, down the line, you will quit or you will get discouraged or you won't just believe in it anymore and you will just um, um, leave. Because I remember, I think my first encounter with you was at the Daily Observer. That was years, years ago. Yeah. And I think we had an interview or something, and it was really, 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 really good. And I, I was like, this guy is really passionate, and you were really nice. Do you want to drink tea? Do you want to do this? I'm like, this is nice. It's, 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 it's refreshing to go to a place and somebody loving their job enough to even step aside and make you feel comfortable. Uh -huh. I don't know if somebody was doing something with my uh, report or whatever they were reporting, but you took charge and you were all in it. And that just goes to show the passion that you have. So what happened after the, how long were you in Daily Observer? And when did you move? Yes, I, I was at the Daily Observer from 2008. Actually, I started with, with my very good friend, Umar Wali. I mean, we started together at the Observer. I mean, he's one of my- You guys my, are literally like twins. I ex see. Exactly, I so many people ask me that question it. still. I mean, <laughs> because to be honest, I mean, he, he, he's, a, he's more than a friend. He's a brother, we, oh. we, we, we're very close actually. So we started in 2008 and then, uh, from 2008, uh, yeah, at the Observer, and then uh, in 2009, I, I could remember Ibrahim Jaumani, you know, uh, leaving us to join the U.S. Embassy. He's a good exactly, you know, he was the editor in chief at the time, and then he left to join the U.S. Embassy, and then that's how it was. I think it was in 2009 that I was confirmed because, as I said, from 2008, I was a freelance reporter, mm. learning a lot from those who who. who but were, I think you exactly. learned more than a lot. Too. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> In 2009, uh, I was confirmed as a staff reporter, oh. and, and from then we, we moved on. And then uh, in 2011, you know, then I, I also moved to Basse, Upper River Region, where I have spent like one year, four months oh. reporting uh, for the Daily Observer, covering the whole region. In fact, going beyond Basse to, wow. to other regions and even into the Casamas region, just to make sure uh, I'm able to report for the Daily Observer. Wow. And that really helps me in the sense that I was the only reporter in, in URR, Basse, to be specific. Wow. And then in this case, you have to be an all-rounder. You must be very offy of how to report about everything. Uh -huh. And it really helps me because uh, the, the, the good thing is that even from the Daily Observer, back in the office here, I was prepared for, all, for that challenge. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started newly, I mean, you only report on courts. That was the procedure at the Observer back then. When you start newly, you only, you only go to the courts oh. because, uh, yeah, it, it, it helps. It helps a lot, I, even though it's, it's, it's a, very intense. Yeah, it's, a, it's an area that not so many journalists really want to go into because oh. knowing how sensitive and yes. it is court reporting is not like any workshop or whatsoever okay. story. So it, it really helps, and then I was in Basse for one year, four months, reporting for the Daily Observer, covering, you know, mm -hmm. I think I reported virtually everything wow. in, in Basse, and it really helps me in, in better, you know, 
preparing me for, for, for any further challenge. And in, in May 2012, I, I came back uh, to the main office at the Observer. And then from there, I've been there until 2017, around, around May 2017. How did that, that experience mold you when you came back? Yes. What, it, what a value did it add for you? It, it really helps me to, to, to be able to work under pressure, mm -hmm. knowing the fact that I was the only reporter back then in Basa URR. So calls were coming in left, right, center. I mean, I was the only reporter there, and then it really helps me. You didn't me. have help. No assistant, nothing. Yes. Exactly. So you, you do everything by yourself. But then, uh, as I said, it, it really helps me to, to be really committed mm -hmm. to, to be able to work under pressure. Mm. Yeah. That's great. So before we go on our break, I would want to ask, um, from the Observer, where did you go? Yes. Uh, f from the Observer, I, I, have, I have also write for the Fatu Network. Okay. I have, I have write for the Point newspaper. Yeah. Standard also, I, I, at some point, I write for them. And also write for some online uh, mm -hmm. online platforms yeah, like yeah. the International Sports Press Association. I write mm -hmm. for their website. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've, I've I've already you know write for for, for some yeah. lo local newspapers. You made in the a game. big jump. You went from the newspapers, like the editorial newspapers, and you jumped into TV. Yeah. That's a big. A lot of people don't know this, but in journalism and the media, that's a big shift from moving to um, the maybe like a radio because this time people see you yeah. they don't only hear you exactly they don't see your writing they get to physically see you you know you you are present in their faces all the time we are going to go for a break but when we come back we're going to talk about that part because i think it is really really important because you're making such a huge difference yeah. on that part too stay tuned don't go anywhere QTV is ending this year with December Marketplace grab the opportunity to showcase your business at your location at an affordable price Take us and the audience through your shop and talk about your products on our special Marketplace platform. QTV Marketplace is a commercial spot within our prime time. You know what that means. Larger audience. Wider reach. It is that time of the year where visibility guarantees high sales. So you can't afford to miss out. To participate in the Marketplace, call us on 32444 or send us an email at marketing at qtv.gm. Welcome back to the show. In the studio with me today, I have Mr. Ali Usise, and I'll say journalist extraordinaire. Um, before we went on a break, we were talking about your experience with the Daily Observer and the reporting you've done and all the experiences that have molded you to where you are now. So I spoke about the shift you had from jumping, I'll say, I won't even say jump, from kind of pulling from mm. <laughs> the, the newspaper scene to going into TV. What happened? How did you find that? How did you find that connection? When did it click for you to be like, "Hey, I want to be on TV"? Yes, actually, the, the idea of going into you know, broadcast TV, as, as you as you just said, I mean, wasn't something that was really on, on my agenda. Actually, I mean, I, I still wanted to write for the for the newspapers, but I could remember there was this particular friend of mine, a veteran TV broadcaster. Who actually, you know, we, as I you know, because I always like to reach out to veterans to actually have a chat mm -hmm. with them, try to seek their ideas, opinions, and all that. And then, you know, we were having this private, private conversation when he actually came up with the, with the idea. Hey, come on! I think there's this new TV coming up, QTV. Why not? You know, you give it a shot. Perhaps you know you have spent over almost uh, ten years, you know, in the print. Why can't you try broadcast media and say? And then at the beginning, I wasn't that much, you know, much into you know going into broadcast and all that. But you know, after having that, you know, thought, and then I, I decided to apply for Q, QTV, and then luckily uh, I was I was fortunate to be among uh, the oh, people wow. who actually were, were 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 taken by by those who were in charge at the oh, time, wow. out of men who applied because you know it was a first private TV station, and then like that you must know, have been a very, very exactly, high and then selection. and then Gambians and and TV, everybody was so excited to apply and to be I on know. QTV and all that. So it was it was quite good, and then. That's how I, you know, ventured into broadcast uh, and then joined QTV Gambia. I mean, we started it actually among yeah. the first staff that were employed uh, at QTV. Mm -hmm. And then I've been there since uh, February 2018 to now. But as I said, uh, the, the, the experience at the Daily Observer had, had, had really paved the way for me. Oh, yeah, that, absolutely. you know, even when I came into broadcast media, I, I found it uh, somehow easier for the fact that, you know, I was already off it with the 
with the basics of journalism, the, the, you know, the ethics and all that. It really guided me. And not only that, also even the experience I gathered at the Observer, you know, the, the overseas travels, you know, it exposed you a lot, you know. I mean, the fact that in 2012, I covered the Under-17 World Cup in yes. Baku, Azerbaijan. Yeah. And not only that, you know, covered several, you know, sub-regional activities, ECOWAS in Abidjan mm -hmm. and, you know, Nigeria as well. I've been there several times covering mm -hmm. international conferences and mm -hmm. all that. So it, it really helps me. So uh, when I came to Observer, it was just my plan to adjust somehow because knowing the fact that broadcast is somehow different from the print. Yeah. But uh, with the good people that we that we met there, we did, together with the teamwork, I mean, where I was able to catch up and... Thank God, uh, we're you still pushing, really we're, still, we we're still learning, and then uh, we're still learning yeah. as far as broadcasting is You're concerned. learning really fast <laughs> yeah. as well. So, like, you know, um, Kill TV is huge, it's big. Um, oh, I want to understand, because we're all in the media, but it's like different kind of specialties and stuff. What's, what, what do you find a bit different from the editorial, like, newspapers to broadcasting? What what what's the what's the difference here? Because a lot of the, people the, don't understand it. They think a journalist is a journalist. Yeah, the, the difference uh, between the print and the, and the broadcast. Sometimes for me, I, I I tend to say maybe broadcast is much more easier than print. I think so. In too. In, the, in the sense that for, for print you, you write it all, and then but with the broadcast with this insert that you have, it tend to you know you you write less. Yeah. You, you write less, and then you know because you know you have you know less words to. To put together because it's, it's about visual people are watching yeah so there are certain things that you don't really have to tell people this is because they're already they watching it, it. so yes. but for the print it's, it's, a, it's a different ball game you know you, you really have to take people right inside the, the event trying yeah. to describe to and all that it, exactly. they're there. yeah but in broadcast in as television i mean it's different people are watching so television you don't really is hard exactly so it, television is hard too it, it, it's, it's hard too to be honest it, 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 it is it's, hard. it's not easy but then i mean is, is, is the media, is, is, is media work in general is, it's hard, is, is, yeah. is hard, yeah, I to be know. honest, yeah. So how is, how is it like working with QTV? Tell me about it. You guys seem like a very close, neat family. You seem like all of you seems like really, really close. How has that been like? Yeah, it, it's quite interesting. Uh, at QTV, let me tell you one thing. Uh, the, the teamwork is, is very good, especially at the moment. I mean, we, we have a very good team there. You know, you and you're not it. many. Exactly. We are not many. Like, uh, there's just that unity mm -hmm. amongst us, the reporters, the program department, the camera department, the technicians. I mean, there's that unity amongst us. I mean, sometimes, you know, you're bound to have some misunderstanding here and there. That's, is, is it, that, that's the nature of the job. Yeah. But then after the job, you know, we, we, we all realize, that, you know what, it is a job. And then we, we move on. But then to be honest with you, uh, the unity, the teamwork there, especially. And you have a great leadership. Exactly, well. great leadership, especially under the news department. You have Ade Drame, who, who, who to me is, is among, as I, I, I always say, wherever I go, he's among the best, the best, among the best you know, news editors I have worked with. And he over, speaks really well. Exactly, over, 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 over the last you know, 14, 15 years I've been in the profession. A, a very humble person. Wow. I mean, he, he respects everyone. And that's one thing that, you know, has has really earned him the respect of everyone in within QTV. Oh, wow. I mean, he's so humble, and then you know, he since he he came to QTV, he has also helped in you know further developing the, the news department. And because of that, we have seen a lot of changes uh, in, within the, in, the, in within, within the news department. And as I said, you know, the likes of Tunkara and others, of course, Mr. Ka being the general manager, he's also doing well. Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of it because at the end of the day, you cannot achieve anything in the absence it's of, a, of, of unity. You know, you cannot achieve anything, you know, if, if you really believe in, in, in that mentality of divide and rule. Mm -hmm. For the fact that, you know, every, everyone under you, you know, should be, should be seen as equal. I mean, there shouldn't be like any sort of, you know, preferential treatment for anyone. Once you do that as a leader, you are bound to fail. Mm -hmm. And then, but thank God, QTV, I mean, it's, things are really going well. I, 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 I see that. Um, but in, in every place, working place, there's always people that um, are exceptional. I find you to be exceptional. You all are great journalists. Yeah. You're exceptional. Um, but there's something that you're doing so right. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's experience. I mean, obviously, other people have experience as well. But then I just want to know, you know, like, when you're reporting, I do watch you report on TV. You have a lot of passion and enthusiasm, especially when you're doing sports. You do report on other things. Some yeah. people get confused now. What kind of journalist are you? Are you a sports reporter? 
or do you do overall? Because I think you're well-rounded. Yeah. That's where I'm trying yeah, to go to. Exactly. So help me here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that's very important. So important to ask this yeah. question. Not, not only QTV, I think the all the media houses that you go to, you find out that most of these reporters are all around us. In the sense that, as you said, I mean, some of these newsrooms, they are not as big as you will see in other newsrooms like Al Jazeera, BBC yeah. and others, where when you go, sometimes, you know, you see sports department alone, they have, in fact, the, the number of staff. reporters only on sports department is, is far more than the, the, the total number of staff at QTV. Yeah. In this case, you find it so difficult to really have those, you know, people actually specializing in, in one okay. area. So because of that, I mean, you have reporters who will be all around us. I mm -hmm. mean, that also boils down to the, the, the experience because some of them, even despite being all around us, whenever they report, you, you begin to wonder, actually, yeah. it seems the, this person is, is better in this area than yeah. the other area. You because, are, you because are of, because good of the experience all and, the and areas, all that. Especially when it comes to sports and health yeah. and stuff like that. I find that you give your heart out to it. So, 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 so that, that's it. So, you know, because of, you know, some of these media houses, they have the, that resource challenge somehow, so they cannot really, you know, employ as many people as they will want. And because of that, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to have, you know, people actually specializing in, in, one, in, in one area. Yeah. What do you enjoy more reporting on? Virtually, I, I enjoy reporting no, on No, there must be one that you like, you love to report more on. Well, uh... We all do. I know. I know. Yes, topics. To, to, I know. Yeah, to, I know. I yes. know. Wait, wait. I, 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 I do. I do. I do. But, but to be honest with you, I what I enjoy most, I, I love going to the provinces. Okay. I really love doing stories in rural Gambia. When I'm doing those that's kind of stories, that's your territory. That's exactly. I see that. When I'm doing those you stories, you get down you know, and dirty. I, I, I get see you put excited. Your trousers off and I you get <laughs> excited because I, I really know what they go through. So I really enjoy it when I'm in the in in in, in rural Gambia. You know, bring trying to bring out stories of you know. Wow things that are really affecting the people there. Those sort of stories, when I'm doing them, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I think it's go it goes back to what you said earlier about the disaster that happened in your village when you were younger. Yeah. And there was the report that was given out to the people you felt the information wasn't enough. Yeah. Maybe that is what pushes you for when you're doing those kind of reporting in the rural Gambia. That Does that come to your mind? Exactly. And, and not only that, uh, maybe now things are changing, but in, uh, what we have seen, most of these media houses, they tend to focus, most of their reporting just around the Greater Banjo area. And then, to, to be honest with you, Gambia there, are a lot, there are a lot of stories out there in rural Gambia know. that you know, people can report about. But unfortunately, most of us, we only focus uh, around the Greater Banjo area. And now, perhaps because of the, the new democracy and all that, everything now seems to be centered around politics yes. uh, and all that. But I mean, there are several other stories that are the out amazing there. amazing stories. Amusing stories out there in rural Gambia that people should, should really know. But then, Unfortunately, because of resources, as I, as I would say, because some media houses wouldn't like to spend that huge money just to have yeah. their reporters go to the provinces to get those stories. Yeah. But then, as I said, uh, doing you guys stories go far and wide. Exactly. I that you exactly. Guys go so, far and wide. doing stories uh, from the, from rural Gambia is something that I'm that I'm always you know proud when I, when I'm doing. We're gonna go for a break, but before we go for the break, actually, let me just ask one question: um, Do you see yourself? somewhere down the line, expanding into... Because I think I've seen you read the news before. Well, I, I haven't read the news yet. But you I, haven't? I, I, I I've ha seen you do something like that. <laughs> yes, I, I haven't, but I moderate uh, events like the, the State of National... Not, not, you know, the State yeah. of the Opening mm -hmm. of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And not only that, even the last by election in Yamina West, I moderated that panel discourse and all I that. I saw so, that too. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you balance all these things you're doing? Yeah, uh, as you said, it's just about it's, it's, just, it's just about passion and also proving to people that you can do it. Even where as at some point, some people might 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 have, might have that have their doubts yeah. about you, yeah. but you know, once the opportunities come, you prove to them that you know what, I can do it, yeah. and that's exactly what happened in most cases. I mean, as as at some point, you know, people might not be so much comfortable with you for for reason best known to them, yeah. but once you start proving to them, you know what. I can do it like any other person. That's how it all starts. You don't even need to prove anything to exactly. anybody. You, know? so. you don't owe it to anybody. You're doing you. That's yeah. the most important thing. Before we go on the break, when it comes to journalism and the media in the Gambia, who's your role model? Who's somebody that you would like? Wow, 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 wow. Quite a tough question, you know. Because, okay, okay. I'll give you, you, know, because, I'll, I'll give because, you three because, people. Because, yeah. I'll give you three. Is that fair? Yeah, maybe. Or yeah. four. Just, just bring the names and perhaps. I'm not going to give the names. Because you, because you know why? Uh, if it's about the veterans, 
I, I would say most of them are people that I have really, uh, in one way or the cross path with them. I have learned something from them. Because okay. like I said, uh, I'm this person who, who loves to reach out to veterans. And time, and that's a, that's a anywhere very, that's I meet with them, move. you know, there's that huge respect between them and I, you know, and then I that's learned a, a lot from them. From, that's a yeah. smart kid. Yeah. 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 But yeah. still, you don't escape the question. Give me, <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me three names. Th that's what I'm saying, you know. Throughout the journey, I have learned a lot from, from several veteran journalists. Okay, when so, it comes to sports reporting, who do you think when you're reporting in your head, that person comes to your head, that you feel like, I want to perfect this? We have a few of them, but then... Uh, you're making this hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, T to be honest with you, to be honest with you, Nana Maketa. Okay, and when it comes to... When it comes to print writing, mm -hmm. Nana Maketa. Is, is, is among them. Okay. Yeah, Nana Maketa, because uh, as I said, I mean, when I was studying at the Observer, he was, he was his uh, sports editor, mm -hmm. and then, you know, he, he is the one who actually, you know, took Pays, me through, yeah. and then saw me a lot. So I, I will say Nana Maketa, but it's not limited just to him. We have several other, you know, sport writers who I've always learned okay, from. Okay, outside of sports, when it comes to reporting in general, who would you say? They're not going to be mad at you. <laughs> this is just a conversation. I just want well, <laughs> I'm gonna get it out of you, you know. God. It's, this is a tough question, you know. Because as I said, you know, we, we have so okay, many you know of them there. Do. So I'm <laughs> gonna let you breathe because I think you're under pressure. We go for the no, break. No. When we come back, you're gonna get back to it. No Stay problem. Tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I'm still here with um, Aliu Sisi, and I'm so happy you're here um, to do this show with me. Because um, I have a lot of people tell me, Oli, you interview people in the music industry, fashion industry, but you've never done anything about sports or anything. Mm -hmm. So I, the award you won, I was so proud of you. I remember saying it, and um, your and Mr. Ka talking about it, and you being on TV and receiving that award, I think is so phenomenal. And I am just so proud of you. And there's more to come. Like how amazing it is, is it like to, to win that? I mean, Africa is big. West Africa is big. There's so many countries in it. Yeah. For you to win the best reporter for sports and health? It was on health, actually, on, on health. the COVID-19. How did that make you feel? I mean, like, that is huge. Do you know that's a huge deal? Yes, uh, you're so actually, humble. Yeah, actually, it, it all started uh, sometime in, in March this this year mm -hmm. when when we were in the peak of the COVID nineteen. I mean, uh, the Mark Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, in 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 partnership with the First Ladies of Africa, yes. actually initiated this thing. Uh, it's called you know the stay the stay home uh, yeah. awareness raising campaign mm -hmm. by the media. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the reports that. The, that journalists do about COVID-19, knowing the fact that, you know, so many people were asked to stay at home. And there was a need to, to, to make them know that, you know, COVID-19 is real. And then, you know, they really have to, you know, take the, the preventive measures to, mm -hmm. to save themselves. And then when this thing happened, uh, journalists, you know, were sending their work to, to the Mark Foundation uh, officials, actually, not even the first ladies, in fact, were in charge of this thing, even though the Mark Foundation was partnering with the first ladies. Yes. I mean, the Mark Foundation had their own independent panel who were mm -hmm. scrutinizing all these, all, these, all these media reports that were sent mm -hmm. to them. Uh, and then I could remember the day it was announced, actually, I was not even online at the time. Uh, I was at Paradise uh, representing Mr. Ade because he was mm -hmm. supposed to make a uh, a presentation of a paper on on gender-based violence, uh, okay. and the, but then unfortunately he couldn't make it, so he asked me to step in for him and do that presentation for him. So I was there, and then when I come out of the hall after doing my presentation, uh, and then I on my phone, and then this thing, this news came up, and I think the the first part to come was Freddie Tending. Yeah, mean, yeah. Freddie was the was the first so to you call. Had no clue. Exactly, Freddie was the first to call, and he was like, "Congratulations!" I'm like, "Thank oh, you." Okay. What is it about? And he was like, "About the." Mark, Mark found this one. But then as you said, it's, it's quite gratifying, not only for me, but I think this is good for the entire Gambia, Gambia yeah. media fraternity, knowing the fact that a Gambian journalist is, is able to 
win, the, win this award among, amongst journalists who actually from Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Ghana, you it's name them. Deal. I mean, they all submitted their work and having me winning this award. I mean, for me, it was something that was great, not only for me, as I said, but the entire country, QTV, where I work, and then whoever has been supporting me throughout the journey. And as I said, I mean, it's, it, it all boils down to hard work, commitment, yeah. loving what you do, believing in yourself, and then knowing that, you know, with hard work, commitment, and perseverance, so certainly, you know, success is, is always a reality. And for me, that has always been my, my guiding principle that, you know, you just, just believe in yourself, work hard, stay focused, and then the rest is in the hands of Ya Allah. I mean, he, he controls everything. Yeah. But as I said, I mean, it's, it's not been easy. I mean, you're talking about the awards, actually, even the National Journalism Award organized by the GPU. Mm -hmm. Last year, I won two awards. Uh, I won the Best Agriculture Reporter of the Year mm -hmm. and the Best Health Reporter of the Year last year. Mm -hmm. This year, again, I was able to retain the Best Health Reporter of the Year award again at the GPU Award. So it's, 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 it's a proud moment for me. And then for this also us. comes with a challenge. I mean, it, it, yes. it, it comes with a challenge to the fact that, you know, I have to continue work harder to make sure that you know, I'm able to win more awards in the coming years. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. If you don't, we'll call you out for it. <laughs> you said it here, so it's on record now. Yeah. You know, like, does these experiences keep you humble? Does it make you hungry to do this, to do what you're doing more? Because I mean, like, you have a lot of people that will look up to you. You have your colleagues looking up to you. You have boys, girls wanting to be you somewhere down the line. That's a big shoe to fill. It's a lot of pressure too. Yes, uh, for me, I believe, even though I won all these awards for me, I don't think it's really changed anything as far as I'm concerned, as far as my, you know, my interpersonal relation with people is concerned, because whoever knows me knows that I'm that, I'm that jovial person. I mean, where I, wherever I am, I always like to make people laugh oh. and then, you know, create jokes and all that. And then for me, winning awards shouldn't really change that, you know, Whatever you are, you should always remain humble and know that you are nothing without people. Right. So for me, as you said, is I'm I'm still humble about it, but then it also challenged me to work harder and then to to win more awards because it doesn't change anything at the end of the day. I mean, we are just human beings. So whatever we achieve in this world, I mean, we should always remain humble. I'm sure your employers like they're really really proud of you as well. Indeed, we are from you know, from the CEO of the Q Group, Mohamed Jab, you know, down to my colleagues at the office, the likes of Tunkaraka, Mr. Ade, Babakar Sise, and everyone there, you know, Mr. Cole, I everyone, saw Mr. Francis, and all that. You. I mean, yeah, so, so they you know, I mean, they they are all proud of the achievement. As I said, it's not it's not just about me because wherever they say Ali Sise, they will say Q T V Gambia. So for me, I mean, this, you're an ambassador. This success is not just for me; it's for the whole country. Yeah. We're so proud of you. We yeah. congratulate you, the ABL team, the the Oli Tal Show team. I'm sure Gambia joins us in congratulating you. Um, I believe in you. I believe there's more to come. You have so much to offer, and you do your work with so much respect and so much grace and so much humor. Even yeah. I saw, I see that humor in when you when you're reporting that you do it with so much ease, as if like you're yeah. having fun. And this is something that people pay attention to. You know. People pay attention to these qualities. Where do you go from here after all of these things happening down the line, like 25 years from now, with all the gray hair? Well, uh, know, where do you see? I mean, you know? uh, I, my plans actually, because at the end of the day, I mean, none of us pray to be, you know, a reporter for the for your entire life. At some point, you know, you, you really have to live active reporting and yeah. perhaps go into communication and PR and, and, and all those stuff. So at the end of the day, I mean, that's eventually where all of us will be heading to, going into PR and, 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 and you know, being communication specialists for, 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 for other organizations. So mm -hmm. that is the that is intention, that is the plan, but then- I think TV, as, they're gonna keep you. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I have no plan of, of leaving QTV anytime soon if everything goes as well mm -hmm. as, 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 as intended. I don't have any plan of leaving. But, you know, you can never tell. I mean, this life. And Fingers and, crossed. And, I exactly. hope everything goes and, 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 and thing, you know, could happen. Because, I, like, I could remember. If anything happened, I'm going to come yeah, there and yeah, I'm going to be mad. I mean, like, <laughs> whoever had told me, okay, you know, I was going to, you know, stop writing you know, writing newspapers at the time, I, I wouldn't believe it. I, I remember in 2017, I was in Azkabad, you know, mm -hmm. covering the Asian games, mm -hmm. uh, games in Azkabad. Mm -hmm. And I, I met with other colleagues from, from the African continent and even across Europe and yeah. others. And then, you know, we were just, you know, discussing about our, our experience in the media and all that. And I, I remember 
telling one of my friends, you know, Jenny Antonis, he reports for the BBC. Mm -hmm. We were staying in the same hotel. And I was like, I don't think I will leave uh, Brighton East River anytime soon. And um, for her, you know, she, she found it very strange and she looked at me and she said, why? I said, you know, I just love writing. I, 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 I enjoy, you know, print media. And uh, I think she was also somehow trying to convince me. I think you should also try, you know, broadcast Explore, and see. Yeah. It's, broadcast is nice because, you know, she reports for the BBC. Yeah. So, I mean, as I said, it's, it's life. Anything could happen. But as I, as, I, as I said right now, I don't have plan of leaving QTV at, at the moment. Okay. <laughs> at the I don't moment. Want you to I, I don't know, but that's that's the interest. On you can never tell though. But then, no, I. I don't. How do you manage your the limelight? Gambia, you know, it's really small. Yeah. Do you go out somewhere and people say, "Oh, that's him"? Yes, it, it does. How happens. do you manage that? It, it, it does happens. I mean, sometimes you go out, you meet with some people, they call you, and you know, you are like. You can't even remember their names. In for some of them, you don't, you don't even know, know them. Their names, so know usually, them. I mean, when that happens, when a, a manager like bro, naga or uncle, yeah. naga dev yangi fine stuff like that, or with a jiggy and la sister, how are you? And that's it. But then uh, it, it doesn't change anything uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, that's just so that people are following, people appreciate what you're doing. You have some who naturally they just appreciate you, and when they see you, they cannot just hide their feelings. They will tell you, I like the, I like what you're doing. I like your appearance on TV and all that. But that's the beauty of it. I mean, that's the beauty of it. But then, that's, that's, that's the media for I you. I'm so even you, you know, you, 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 no, you also nobody, have that. Nobody recognizes <laughs> me now. No, it's like, I'm not as big as you. You, you, you don't agree, but no, that's the fact. I don't. No. That's the fact. So, I mean, it, it happens. It happens. I have one question that, that people keep asking me, and a lot of people want me to ask you this. And <laughs> why are you laughing? Well, I, I don't know. You're laughing already. You don't even know what it is. Well, a question that, that I don't know. Anyway. Have you ever been asked this question that I'm about to ask before? Because you don't even know what it is. <laughs> and you're laughing. Well, I, I don't know. You can ask the question. Okay. I have this question that a lot of people have been asking me, and some people don't know you're coming here, told me. When he comes, ask him. Are you married? Are you taken? Are you single? Are you looking? I'm not married. Mm -hmm. I'm not taken. Mm -hmm. I am looking. Are you single? Yeah, I'm looking. Okay. Thank you. I think that question is answered now. Okay, we go back. We go on something very serious now. Alio, congratulations to the Gambia football team. What just happened last week was amazing. Incredible. Yeah. For a country that has never qualified to Afghan. Yes, we have seen the Gambia qualified for the under-17, under-20, at both the Af African Cup of Nations and even at the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But the senior national team, we have never qualified. And then it seems like, you know, Gambia is on the brink. We're Gambia ready. is on the verge of qualifying for its maiden African Cup of Nations in 2022. Do you 2022. think we can do it? Do you yes. believe in it? I am quite confident. With the team that we have, with the zeal in the players mm -hmm. to qualify this time around, I have no doubt the team can qualify. Remember, we, we have only two more games to go now against Congo and Angola. Mm -hmm. So if we're able to win our, one of our next games, then the home game will just be to go and have fun. Enjoy ourselves and we're celebrate. We're not having fun. We're not celebrating. We're going to work hard. Yeah, we're going to work hard. But then it, it, That's it, where we trip sometimes, you know. It just gets yeah, over yeah, our but, head. Yeah, and we're but, like, party, but, have but, fun. But, but, but then it, if then it ruins but, but everything. If Gamb is the able, party can yeah, come later. Yeah, but if Gambia if Gamb is able to win... We one, jinx ourselves. For, like. for example, <laughs> for, for example if, if we are able to win our game against Congo, right? That's maximum three points. Uh -huh. Like the home game, the final home game perhaps, you know, against Angola. It's something that we you know we are already asked that we have qualified, so we, we just go to the stadium, okay, play let's the stadium, and, and, and celebrate. In, in but uh, but, uh, but uh, one thing, one, one thing is certain. <laughs> one thing is certain. I don't know for whatsoever reason, but I'm so convinced that yeah. the team, yeah. the team can make it this time around. Okay. 2022 in Cameroon, for me, I'm so much convinced that the boys will make it. They did really, really well. I am so. Proud and it's going to be them. historic. Not only for the Gambia, but even the leadership of the Gambia Football Federation. For the first time having Gambia qualified to the AFCON, it is something that we all can wait to see. It would just be like 2005 when we had the under-17. You know, you, you remember those monumental. old days, Westfield, was, Westfield days? I was really young, Well, but I remember. That is likely going to happen very soon because I'm quite convinced that by March next year, Gambia's qualification to the AFCON will be guaranteed. I'm, I'm so hopeful. God's With the way. talents that we have now, the team, the zeal, the unity among the players, well, I'm quite convinced. Well, if you say it, I'll believe you, because you, you, you've been there 
with them. And I think part of your journey reporting, you've reported, I think, and you've seen probably written a lot of these stories. What do you think is the difference between this team and the first ones? Is it, what, what's the difference? Yeah, w one thing is, is, is the unity in the team, the commitment of the players, you know, the talent, because I mean, we have very good players, you know, mm. and then perhaps also the motivation, the support, you know, that they are receiving from the Federation. That's, that might also be a contributing factor. But then for me, I will single out the unity among the players and then the commitment to see that you know, they succeed this time around. As you said, I have, I have covered the national team, both in the mm -hmm. country and outside. Mm -hmm. I, have, I remember I traveled with the national team in 2016 in Mauritania during mm -hmm. the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, we couldn't make it. Oh, no. But then, you know, when, when you are with the team, you staying in the, in the same hotel, you, you see the movements, even when it's time to have food, you know, you, you see the sections, you know, the, yeah. You begin to understand that, you know, all isn't right. The divide I mean, Exactly. There is some sort of divisions. You, you have the, the, the 2005 generation having their own group, you know, this place like from this part. Like these are the kids. Exactly. They're so, liable. Exactly. So this, the, the, this, this particular place from, from this part of the, country, the yeah. world also, you know, seeing them as, as one group. So, but I think that is something that we are not seeing now. Mm -hmm. There is so much unity, and then we're having so much players now coming back to the team. You know, the likes of Steve Trawale, Modu Barrow, the, the Musa Barrows. I mean, I think we have a lot of talents for me that, you know, can really, you know, make this country qualify. Let's do this. Yeah. We're also proud of them. So yeah. if they are watching and their team, congratulations to them. Um, what do you want to leave for the sports committee if they're watching you being there and being a reporter? What do you think they can work on? Because you are up close and personal with these people. You know a lot of yeah. things that they wouldn't even see because of your nature of your job. If you give me just one word on what you think it is that should be fixed to make this better, what word would it be? Investment. Okay. Sports is no more just a leisure. Okay. Sports is like a business. Mm -hmm. You really have to invest if you, don't, if, if you want to succeed. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you take Senegal as an example. Senegal is our closest neighbor. Mm -hmm. You go to Senegal, you see the infrastructure development as far as sports is concerned, you, you, you will begin to wonder, no doubt, you know, they are doing better than us. Yeah. Because if you come back to the Gambia, look at our, at our, at our, at our sports facilities, I mean, there are not anything to, 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 to celebrate. Okay. So I think the government should really start investing more in, 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 sports, in, in, in sports infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. It's been so amazing having you here on the show. This has been so enlightened. I hope people who have been asking about you to come I'm really, really happy because I had a lot of people want you to come. And after the award, I was like, hey, I have to have him here because we all need to celebrate each other, our wins, our lose, our ups and downs. This is what I believe in. And it is such an honor having you here. What do you want to leave for your fans and the show? Yes, uh, just to once again, thank you for, for inviting me. And then it's, it's been a great pleasure to be on this uh, platform. I mean, just to thank everyone who has been very supportive to me, my, my family, my parents, you know, my childhood friends, you know, who actually uh, I grew up with in the village and we all moved down to the coast and then we're still, you know, very close. I mean, my team back then at the Daily Observer, as I said, the Jaumani, yeah. Nana Maketa and everyone, and even the people that I started with, you know, the likes of Umar Wali, I mean, these are all people that, you know, have really contributed in one way or the other because, you know, we, we were there for each other, we guided each other, we supported each other. Yeah. And then, Tokyo TV, where I work for at the moment, I thank them all also for the support, uh, the teamwork there, my colleagues there, everyone. I thank everyone who, are, who has really supported me, who has really been part of this journey to where I am today. All I'm going to add to that is keep it up. And whatever you're doing, you're doing right. So don't ever change. Okay? Thank you. Don't ever change. Thank you so um, much. I want to thank everybody for watching this show. It was amazing. I hope you enjoyed it and we've learned and we've been enlightened. Until we come your way next time, have a good evening and goodbye.